Now, presiding judge Mutsamai Makume has ruled that the late anti-apartheid activist Neil Agate did not commit suicide in police custody. Testimonies and evidence has pointed to a major cover-up cover up rather, cooked up by the apartheid police. ENCA reporter Govan Whittles was in court. We cross now to him at the High Court for the latest update. Good afternoon there, Govan. I mean, we heard the judge there overturning that suicide ruling. How is the family feeling at this point? Well, they feel vindicated. It's what they suspected all along. And there's also been some scathing criticism of the police as well as the judicial officers involved in that inquest. And the court found that Neil Agard did die by hanging, but it was impossible for him to have hung himself because he was rendered unconscious from 62-hour-long interrogation and sleep deprivation. Just one of the things that was done to him. Let's get some reaction now. Uh, first, we'll speak to Mr. David Bison. He was the attorney representing Neil Agard at that inquest in 1982. And Mr. Bison, the, the judge here, having scathing criticism for the magistrate in the inquest, saying he was biased, he believed in conspiracy theories, and that he actively facilitated the cover-up. You were there, you saw the magistrate. What did you make of that criticism? I think it's a very accurate and well-researched criticism because, in fact, the magistrate bought the cover-up that the security police put to the inquest court. And this was very obvious to us at the time because it was the finding of today's uh, court and the second inquest under this very meticulous judge um, that, in fact, the security police who interrogated Neil were responsible for his death, completely contradictory to the earlier finding in 1982. And certainly some vindication. Let me bring in now Ms. Yasmin Sukha. She is the chairperson for the Foundation of Human Rights, also a former TRC commissioner. Ms. Sukha, this is now the second case where the findings of inquest during apartheid have been overturned. The first was Ahmed Timo, now the uh, High Court finding that Neil Agate also died due to action by the police. Uh, what do you think this represents for the quest to uncover what happened to anti-apartheid activists that have gone missing or whose deaths have been classified um, as something that the activists don't agree with? Well, this is a vindication for the Agate family and the families of the, three and, you know, the 300 cases that the Truth Commission handed over to the NPA more than 23 years ago. Um, and sadly, of course, in the Ahmed Timor matter, you had Ja Rodriguez die, but using the legal system to evade any kind of accountability. I think this finding is really important because there are two issues. The one is that the security branch have been found to be responsible for his death, but you also have a number of security branch members who are still alive. And I think the judge made it very clear that they should be investigated. And in my view, the logical um, conclusion to that would be investigation for both their involvement in the murder and the cover-up. Um, but that has to happen speedily because, you know, the families are losing hope that the justice system is ever going to deliver anything up to them. And so um, while it's a vindication and the judge was meticulous in the way he did his analysis before he came to his finding, more needs to be done. Thank you so much, Ms. Yasmin Suka. And let's finally speak to Elizabeth Floyd. She the, uh, was the girlfriend of Neil Agate. And in court, quoting uh, some of the testimony, saying that when they told you that Neil Agate had died, you, t you screamed to them uh, that they have killed him. And today you've got the vindication from the judge after so long. How do you feel? Look, it's 40 years later. So it's extraordinary that we've reached this stage after such a long time. The first inquest was done under extremely intimidating circumstances. It was very brave of the detainees to come forward at that time. And it was a huge um, exposure of torture by security police that the general public of South Africa didn't know about. So reopening the inquest um, nearly 40 years later, um, I didn't expect much. Um, I thought the information that we have was, had died. Um, they did work on the detailed work done in the first inquest and built on it, and there's been very thorough investigation led by Frank Dutton. Very meticulous work by the legal team, headed by Howard Varney with Weber Wenzel, and this judge has been meticulous. So it's quite an astounding um, result for the judge to say so clearly he was murdered. It's a long history of the security police killing people in detention or out of detention, 
and then putting it up as a suicide. And it's a very cruel thing to do to all these families and close people around them. So it is something of a breakthrough, but this should have been done 20 years ago. Thank you so much. That's Elizabeth Floyd, former girlfriend of uh, Neil Egerton. We'll have to leave it there because we are out of time, but there certainly is more action expected following the judgment, especially regarding the investigation and possible charging of security branch officials that were involved in either the murder or the cover-up.